let's see. Um, forum, today's forum. I see two people in there, but uh, not, no more. So let's see what's going on. Um, today's day. And this should be no longer available because this should not be a, uh, this. I don't know why. This is section. Okay, let me try student mode. It's okay. I'm doing it for I. I'm doing it from my t my iPad. I see it's available on my phone. It's not, but on my iPad it is. So I'll just do it these things. Okay. Look, uh, in the student mode, all I can see is today. Today's class, right? May 9th. So May 4th. May 4th shouldn't even be visible. It's not even visible. Right? It must be just maybe it's just a glitch on the on the you know, the, since I'm mm -hmm. doing it from my phone. So but I'm able to do it on my iPad. I appreciate it. All right. So uh, All right, so uh, please don't forget to uh, uh, sign into uh, today's forum, right? And I see only, uh, yeah, yeah, you're there. Melody, you're there already. You're there already. Yeah, I, I just did it. I just did it now. Okay, all right. So uh, am I, sh okay, I'm sharing my screen. So, um, Topic six. So uh, we are okay. Not uh, yeah, text treatment. But, okay. Oh, I'll stop that. Oh, okay. Um, I gotta reopen this. Cancel. So we need to talk about IPO going public, right? So as I said. Um, Uh, in the previous class, I said, you know, um, all the companies are basically, you know, uh, uh, as they start up, I mean, startups cannot be uh, listed in the stock market, right? Uh, startups are uh, startups are uh, basically too uh, much of a um, uh, question mark, right? Uh, and it's, I don't think I need further explanation why startups, uh, startups are startups, you know, they are just, you know, uh, uh, but so all the companies are basically, you know, uh, uh, privately held uh, initially, and then as they grow and get, um, uh, some capital invested from you know, a huge amount of capital, at least you know, some decent amount of capital invested by uh, venture capital, then you know, uh, uh, you're not, you know, uh, and even if you get you know, a huge amount of capital invested by venture capital, you must be known to the market. In other words, you're mar you must have market share. Uh, market share means you, know, you are selling to the uh, market and uh, your products are recognized and you are making profits. And I mean, all these things, uh, all these milestones must have met. And then with the uh, help of the, uh, uh, with the help of the uh, investment banks. So investment banks are basically like, um, so I think I should open this. Okay. So investment banks underwrite, right? Investment banks are like brokers for, uh, they broker the IPO, initial public offering, okay? So initial public offer, um, um, initial public offering is the, um, uh, uh, 
usually why uh, a lot of people are paying attention to because if you if the IPO is successful, right? The IPO price, IPO price is basically you know uh, uh, par value, but you know uh, at at the beginning. So let's say today they go public. Today is the IPO. The stocks are sold at uh, the IPO price. Uh, so, for example, you know the stock uh, par value of the stock. So, fifty dollars. Now, par value is a different thing in bond, isn't it right? Par value for bond is the maturity value, but for stock, par value is the IPO price. And if the uh, IPO price is fifty dollars, that's the price, you know, uh, when at 9.30 a.m. on the day of the, uh, uh, it's the price at 9.30 a.m. At, at opening of the market. But by the close, by the close of the, uh, By the close of the day, uh, at 4 p.m., uh, I hate, uh, it's too small. Is there a, so by the closing of the market, the price will move. Right. So if the price is hundred dollars at the end of the day, right? And let's say some of some of the uh, some of the buyers may have paid fifty dollars, but soon uh, if some of them may have paid the seventy five dollars, but you know at the end of the day the price may have moved to hundred dollars, then you know. Those who were invited to the IPO, those who paid, you know, fifty dollars, just over a day, just within a day, they made hundred percent return. Right? Makes sense. So this is why IPO becomes a, a crazy event, you know, a lot of uh, sometimes. And the uh, uh, but let's say. Uh, ignore, ignore $75, but you know, let's say instantaneously at 9.30 p.m., uh, 9.30 a.m., as the market opened, the price just jumped to $100, right? Although the par value was, but then what's going to be the book value at the end of the day? Book value per share at the end of the day Will be hundred dollars, right? And if they sold, you know, um, and think about it, if they sold, you know, uh, uh, ten million shares, or hundred million shares, right? Hundred times hundred million shares. Um, there will be ten billion dollars. And what is this ten billion called? Anybody? What is this 10 billion called? You sold, you know, 100 million shares at $100. So uh, the company got uh, $1 billion. What is this $1 billion called? Anyone? How many people do I have? 
No one can answer this. Uh, is it market capital capitalization? Yes, you're right. Uh, it's called market capitalization. Yes, that's one way to call it. But another way to call it, uh, so Dili, uh, yeah, you get, you're getting 0 0.5. Um, where's my, my pen is here. Okay. Dili, you're going to get 0 0.5. But uh, to the company, this is, what is this to the company? To the company. This is equity at time zero. Isn't that right? This is the equity at time zero. This is the paid in equity. This is the paid in capital, right? This much equity capital was paid in. Paid in capital, right? Um, so basically, uh, this makes a small company that used to be a small uh, privately held company uh, with you know total uh, total asset size of you know probably you know uh, uh, at most at best you know uh, uh, one billion dollars or even you know uh, 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 I, I, I'm sorry uh, uh, this is ten billion I'm sorry, not one billion. Uh, Isn't that right? Uh, so this what turns a small company with you know probably you know uh, 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 ten million total assets suddenly you know um, uh, become a uh, a big company that has you know uh, that has a uh, uh, some you know uh, uh, conceivable. Well, maybe more than more than conceivable, but you know some uh, presence, you know, obvious presence in the market, right? So um, again, some people, uh, some people get over, you know, rich, you know. Um, Overnight, I mean, uh, uh, if you are the founding uh, shareholder, if you are the founding shareholder of this company, think about it. Founding shareholder will be the founding members and you know, the, the guys who had the original uh, idea and technology uh, of the company uh, about this, you know, uh, company and the uh, venture capital who invested, you know, let's say uh, five million dollars into this company, and you know. Uh, uh, for five million dollars, let's say they are holding, you know, uh, uh, five hundred thousand shares. You know, of, that means you know, of, for each share it was ten dollars. And so anyway, either way, suddenly you know they become, you know, uh, they make huge money, right? What they uh, for ten dollars that they paid into this, you know, suddenly it's you know one thousand. Uh, it uh, they make you know a 900% return, right? Just that day. But of course, you know, uh, uh, not everybody, not everyone is selling it uh, on the day of the IPO. Uh, they may hold it for uh, many months or many years, or uh, because if the company is going to grow, uh, uh, it should be con you know persistently held by the investors. If they, some deliberately sell right away, just realizing this, you know, uh, uh, you know, 100% return or, you know, 900% return. I mean, if that's their goal, you know, they, they just uh, sell it right away when the price is, you know. and then if they, if there's a massive sell off like that on the first day, for, then, you know, the from the second day, it's going to, the price will, you know, uh, take a nosedive. And you know, uh, um, uh, then it will be you know uh, uh, there will be a suspicion that they did this just to uh, pump up the price and you know uh, uh, dump, right? Just pump up the price and dump it, you know, uh, uh, 
and uh, there are many there are many instances, many examples of you know uh, uh, some IPOs that were purely uh, used as a uh, vehicle for pumping up the price and dumping you know uh, and for only for a handful of uh, original original investors, right? And the, those who were uh, those who jumped on the bandwagon at the tail end, then they 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 you know lose a lot. They just they are the ones you know left bleeding, you know. So uh, some bad case you know scenarios, but I'm you know that's a bad case scenario. But you know let's let's assume this is a, a very you know a sound company. Nobody is doing this just to uh, take advantage of the uh, uh, the market. Uh, they are a serious business, um, and then in, in that case, you know, uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, hundred billion dollar equity at time zero. One year later, we will have you know uh, equity one. One year later, and equity one, we all know, we all understand, it's equity zero, zero plus EAT at time one, right? But again. What's important is the uh, uh, the fact that the uh, number of shares number of shares do not fluctuate. Okay, number of shares are constant, relatively constant. Why? Uh, because uh, IPO is a primary market. IPO is a primary market. What's a primary market? That's when uh, IPO is a uh, where is it? Primary market is um, the phase of the stock when it when it was sold to the public for the first time. So in primary market, so IPO is the primary market, as I said. The stock is sold by the company to the investors. Okay, the transaction happens between the uh, company, issuing company and um, the uh, investors. And after that, everything is, after that, Everything is in a secondary market. Everything is happening in the secondary market. So the secondary market is then, you know, between uh, between one investor and another. Trading happens between one investor and another, right? So um, when you buy stocks, you know, uh, uh, if you buy stocks, uh, Tesla stocks today, then it's secondary market because unless you are there at Tesla's IPO and you bought the stock at IPO Tesla's IPO uh, you can never buy it in the primary market right uh, everything after that everything is you know uh, so I uh, Tesla went public in 2012 I believe and um, so primary market happens only once in the life of the stock, okay? Of course, you know, if there is, you know, a second public offering, second public offering, it, it's possible. Um, but, you know, it doesn't happen, you know, uh, every day. Uh, second public offering may happen like, you know, uh, 10 years after the, the initial public offering or 20 years after, or, you know, five years after. I mean, um, that's why the total number of shares outstanding, that's why the uh, total number of shares outstanding is relatively constant. Uh, if not, think about it. If the total number of shares is constantly changing, then you cannot... Uh, uh, 
first of all, the existing shareholders won't like it because uh, the pr if number of shares suddenly doubled, what's going to happen to the price of the stock? If the uh, number of shares suddenly doubled, if it's you know uh, suddenly 200 million shares, uh, but you know paid in capital is uh, 10 billion. Uh, think about it. On three days after IPO, three days after IPO, uh, the company sold stocks again. Now, what's going to happen to the price? Hmm? The price will the price will plummet. Why? Because um, unless there's a demand, unless there's a strong demand for this stock, let's say after the first IPO, uh, the demand built up sufficient, you know, instantaneously, uh, there are, you know, uh, uh, demand for 2 million shares. Now, 1 million shares were already, you know, uh, absorbed. So uh, uh, there is another uh, 100 million share, I'm sorry, 100 million. There is another 100 million share uh, in demand, right? Um, and then if that's the case, you can still sell 100 million shares for hundred dollars and the total equity will be twenty billion dollars and if you divide twenty billion dollars by two hundred million the price will still be hundred dollars that price will be maintained but if the uh, and that that's hardly that can hardly happen if, if the demand isn't significantly strong think about it uh, if you s double the uh, supply in other words there are 200 million shares now outstanding uh, in the market, then what's going to happen to the price? Without the demand, without the strong demand that will absorb, that will meet, you know, uh, this uh, increase in supply, and the price will have to fall. It will fall by half. There's no other way. It will fall by half. Then the price will be not hundred dollars, but you know, price will be like fifty dollars. And if you are an existing shareholder, you're not gonna, you're not gonna like it. It goes without saying. You wanna, um, someone will, someone will lose their job. I mean, CEO will be fired, not just lose their job. I think if I were the shareholder, I would like his head, right? You want suddenly I lost, you know, 50%, you know, uh, uh, you would want the head of the uh, CEO. Huh? Isn't that right? <laughs> uh, or all the management, uh, the head of all the management, has of all the management, you know, on the silver platter, <laughs> on the guillotine, right? Um, so that's why, you know, uh, uh, the company doesn't, you know, uh, sell new shares uh, frequently like that. You know, you're not, you're not selling, you know, the company doesn't, so pri the primary market uh, is very rare and few and far between, okay, primary market. And everything is, you know, uh, after that, all the transactions happen in the secondary market, okay? Um, so if you think about it, um, the way company can sell stocks, it's usually through the pri uh, uh, I, uh, public offering, but there are rights offering in which new shares are sold to exist, offered to the existing shareholders first. Okay. And then private placement. It's just, just a private deal, you know, with some uh, uh, large, you know, institutional investors. Uh, the company sells, you know, uh, uh, 10 million shares more and you contact, instead of, you know, uh, putting it in the market, you contact some, you know, uh, uh, institutional investors like, you know, uh, uh, asset management 
farms or the insurance companies and a lot of you know uh, so how is the initial uh, how is IPO uh, uh, plays out so uh, first the company that if the company is growing uh, fast and you know meeting the all the milestones you know uh, first of all um, when they got the venture capital funding right the only reason venture capital is uh, funding this company is for IPO venture capital if you know you can make you know um, uh, if venture capital um, invested five million and got uh, 500,000 shares so each share is you know ten dollars right and then at IPO if at IPO I view uh, if IPO price is you know a hundred dollars right then they made you know a, a thousand fold right they made thousand fold right or you know 900 percent net return so they want to do this that's that's why venture cap but you know uh, before going uh, public right and venture um, investment bank, investment bank is the broker for that so uh, uh, between you know uh, the venture capital and investment banking they said you know certain you know they set a plan you know uh, which includes the milestones you know uh, by year one they have to come to this by year two they have to uh, come to this point by year three and then uh, something like the IPO here so um, Uh, what investment bank does is called underwriting. Okay, what is underwriting? Uh, so uh, underwriting is basically you know um, uh, uh, the semantics. I mean you know uh, the definition by the dictionary means you know you are endorsing or uh, guaranteeing. So, no, but you know. Uh, Typically, that's just the you know uh, semantics, you know, by dictionary. What it really means is you are. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, you are giving a uh, actually you know uh, what kind of guarantee can there be? I mean, nobody can give a guarantee if this company is the company going public. Uh, if that company is selling hundred million shares, how can for at hundred dollars, what can guarantee? Right? Think about it. Who can guarantee and what can guarantee? Who can guarantee and what can guarantee that these hundred million shares? Um, uh, I have to write again here. Who or what can guarantee guarantee that you can sell hundred million shares? sold for hundred dollars a share huh? who can guarantee that nothing can guarantee that so how you know then you might wonder uh, how can the investment bank underwrite so what investment bank does is they will pay uh, instead of hundred dollar uh, they pay, this is what underwriting is, investment bank pays $80 per share.
and they buy all those uh, 100 million shares. This is underwriting. Then, think about it. Then that will give this company um, $8 billion, right? $8 billion to the company. Right? Does that make sense? So it wasn't originally planned 10 billion, but 8 billion guaranteed. I mean, you know, um, in cash, they, they receive 8 billion. This is out of nothing. I mean, you know, um, the this is not, uh, the company is not selling any product or, you know, if they are selling product, then it should be at least worth, you know, uh, 8 billion. But the company is just making, um, the company is getting this capital out of thin air, right? So there is no reason that the company will say no to this. The company won't say no to this because there is no, um, it didn't cost the company anything. They got $8 billion. Um, of course, the company will um, say yes. And then what happens, you know, with 100 million shares? Then that's what uh, investment bank sells these 100 million shares for $100. Okay. Now, what does that then, you know, um, what does that, um, what happens then? You know, I mean, um, it's quite obvious. Investment bank makes, if they can sell all 100 million shares, 100 million, if I, uh, investment bank, sells all 100 million shares, they make $2 billion because, you know, uh, they make $20 per share. And then, you know, uh, 100 million shares. So actually, the investment bank is the one that's taking the um, investment bank is the one taking the uh, risk because there is a chance they may not be able to sell all 100 million shares. But if they sell, most of the times they will be able to sell well, you know, 100 million. But if they sell um, uh, all 100 million shares, then investment ba bank makes uh, two billion. Right. So this uh, this is what underwriting is, and this twenty dollars per share that's called underwriting discount. Ah, uh, I have to. Uh, I need a bigger screen, but uh, <laughs> my handwriting is. This is I cannot make my handwriting smaller. Uh, this is called underwriting. underwriting discount. Okay, that's what the uh, investment banks make. So investment banks are actually, you know, more anxious to, um, or more eager, investment banks are actually more eager to find uh, a, a company to um, broker the IPO deal, okay, because they make, uh, uh, huge profit by doing this. So that's what underwriting is. But, you know, uh, 
in the process, one investment bank is not enough because you know um, sometimes if um, if you have to sell like you know uh, uh, in our example it's hundred million shares. What if you know uh, yeah uh, hundred million shares? That's you know uh, one billion shares. I mean it's a huge number of huge number of shares. So uh, it involves um, it involves a uh, uh, a syndicate. A syndicate is something like this. So there is an issuing corporation, right? Uh, the company that goes IPO, and the underwriting syndicate is organized by the originating house. The originating house is the uh, uh, one investment bank that you know. Um, at the center of this IPO, and it forms a syndicate with other investment banks. So if it is, you know, uh, Goldman Sachs, it, you know, uh, forms, you know, a uh, syndicate with Merrill Lynch and, you know, uh, and so forth, you know, JP Morgan and all. Uh, and each investment bank is, you know, um, interacting with the uh, brokerage firms, you know. These small, uh, uh, blue circles are uh, brokers, brokerage firms. Yeah. So why? Because uh, first of all, brokers are the uh, uh, the ones that are at the forefront, at the front line of contact with the investors, right? Because everyone uh, uses broker to invest. I mean, even the online broker, you might say, I use, you know, um, Robinhood, I use, you know, they are still brokers, right? You just, uh, uh, unlike the uh, uh, Charles Schwab or, you know, unlike, but, you know, unlike the uh, um, the regular brokers, you know, uh, who charge, you know, uh, more fees. I mean, online brokers uh, charge very low fee and, you know, um, uh, but you don't, you know, um, you can directly invest, uh, but there is no uh, analyst, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, broker who, um, uh, who can provide, uh, or portfolio manager who can provi provide, you know, uh, 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 the, the analysis. But again, that's, that's fine. That's why you are studying finance. By studying finance, you become your own analyst. You don't need, you know, uh, 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 you can. So anyway, um, but anyway, you'll have to buy the stocks, bonds through the brokers. So the brokers are the ones at the front line. Uh, they are basically at the interface. They are the ones who interface with the, uh, uh, the investors, their clients. So. Uh, each investment bank uh, has their, you know, um, uh, uh, connection or ongoing business business relationships with the uh, uh, brokerage houses. So uh, uh, there are uh, brokerage uh, under each investment bank. There will be uh, what they call selling group. Selling group is basically a group of uh, brokerage firms, right? And the bro these brokerage firms will invite invite clients. Clients are, of course, you know, uh, inv investors. So actually, at IPO, unless you're invited, you can't have access to an IPO, right? IPO is an invitation-only basis, and the um, so. Unless you have a, unless you are a big client with a broker, you have, you know, like uh, uh, millions of dollars, you know, uh, uh, investing with the broker. Um, you're not that, you know, uh, you're not easily invited. At least, you know, several, you know, hundreds of dollars, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know. So that's what IPO is, okay? That's what the IPO is. So I think uh, it's about, you know, the right time to take a break.
it's 347. So we're going to take a 10 minute break and uh, 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 reconvene uh, uh, like 10 minutes uh, later, right? Okay, all righty, uh, that's uh, 10 minutes.
Oh. <clears throat> All right, we're back. We're back. Uh, we have unusually low attendance now. I have six people currently in the collaborate, although in the uh, discussion board it shows nine people so three are still uh, three are missing and um you understand you know um i check the log logged in time i check the logged in time uh after every collaborate session um people who are not logged in <coughs> excuse me Although they were, although they signed in to, um, although they signed into the uh, discussion board, but if they have no logged in time in the uh, uh, collaborate, uh, then no record of logged in time, then I cannot accept that as you know uh, uh, present, right? Uh, for a 50-minute uh, cl uh, class, you should be logged in at least for more than uh, 40 to 45 minutes. Your logged in time should show. And for a uh, one hour, 40-minute class, your logged in time should be something like, you know, one hour, 30 minutes, or at least one hour, 20 minutes uh, uh, to be validated as present. But if you are, if you don't have any log uh, record of the login time, then uh, it's hard to uh, validate it as present. Okay. Um, so where was I? Um, <clears throat> so now we're moving on to. So that's that's enough of the uh, institutional aspect of the um, uh, stocks. So we're moving on to the valuation uh, of stock so in stock uh, there are four valuation models i mean uh, basically the whole concept of valuation is the same thing as uh, bond or uh, why because valuation means basically um, what is the present value right What's the present value of the future cash flows? Future cash flows, right? So what's the present value of future cash flow? Usually, you know, uh, FCF means free cash flow, but here, what I'm, uh, uh, the cash flow in the future, I'm using it as the symbol for, of course, present value should be, you know, um, uh, that means, you know, uh, eventually, Okay, some alert. Uh, present value means um, what's going on? Literally, the uh, uh, you have to find the uh, present value. In other words, uh, there will have to be a discount, right? And all the uh, future cash flows. So, uh, right, some of the uh, few, uh, cash flows. That's, you know, uh, the concept, basically, that's the concept of present value, right? So, Doing it this way, I mean, finding the present value um, of the future cash flows. In case of stock, the cash flows are future dividends, right? All the dividends in the future, and you will need to. Uh, uh, so actually, it is. Um, it should look like. We 
because discounting, uh, you are discounting every, you know, uh, each and every individual cash flow, right? It should look like this, right? So, right, it should be something like this, right? In case of, you know, stock, uh, cash flow is dividend. So, um, that's why it's called, that's why it's called discounted cash flow model, right? Discounted cash flow model. And this is nothing new because bond, bond, we did, you know, uh, we basically discounted cash flow from the bond. So it's also discounted cash flow model. And in case of, you know, bond, uh, the cash flow is the uh, interest or the coupon payment, which is, you know, always regular amount, right? But in case of stock, uh, and uh, and then, you know, uh, uh, coupon payment and the uh, uh, face value at the end, which is annuity. But in case of stock, uh, the cash flow is dividend. Hence, it's called dividend discount model okay so dividend discount model is a kind of discounted cash flow model right and the inter interesting thing is unlike unlike you know uh, um, uh, the coupon in the uh, bond dividend is not constant we all know dividend is not a constant number. I mean, pref only in preferred stock, only in case of preferred stock, dividend is constant. But, you know, in common stock, dividend is uh, supposed to grow or fall. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? Dividend can grow, you know, uh, uh, go up or up and down depending on the uh, profit, right? Uh, but overall, uh, as long as the company's profit is growing, the dividend will show, right, upsloping trend. Okay. So now we understand what you know uh, DDM is. You know, uh, uh, so dividend discount model is like a. Uh, subset of discounted cash flow model. So with that in mind, um, then there are four different types, four different models. One, uh, it goes by many names, but you know, uh, uh, it's called also uh, it most likely zero growth model. First, zero growth model or uh, it's also called constant dividend model. Second model is called const, uh, eh. Gordon growth model. Uh, I I think there's no high, it's not hyphenated, it's just Gordon growth model. And it's also called a constant growth model. Constant growth model. And the third one is called free cash flow. Uh, uh, Multi-stage model or hmm, a variable growth model. Variable growth model or multi-stage. And the fourth one, fourth one is called fourth one. 
fourth one is called free cash flow model. The free cash flow model is uh, that means you know, uh, no dividend is paid. The model when uh, the model to use when no dividend is paid. Okay. So one thing you have to clarify is that um, uh, const the first one and the second one, you sometimes because of the names, some students confuse that these two. Uh, however, there's no reason you can you know it's very clear. Constant dividend means what? Dividend doesn't grow, right? Constant dividend means you know there is no change in dividend. So dividend doesn't grow. There's no growth, hence called zero growth, right? Whereas constant growth means dividend grows, but at the constant rate. So they are completely, you know, opposite things, right? They are completely opposite things. <clears throat> Excuse me while <laughs> I... Sipping coffee. <clears throat> and what kind of what kind of you know uh, stock pays you know uh, what kind of stock pays constant dividend? We already we have seen it just you know uh, recently. Uh, prefer stock. Prefer stock is exactly this case. You understand that the prefer stock pays constant dividend, right? Fixed amount of dividend, regardless of the, you know, so it's not tied together with the, uh, uh, the dividend doesn't depend on the, uh, um, excuse me, I'm, I gotta get this call. Ah, uh, hold on, hold on. All right, sorry about that. Um, so where was I? Uh, yeah, prefer stock. Prefer stock pays constant dividend. Um, so in a way, it's like a. Uh, um, that's why they say you know it's like uh, it's quasi debt, meaning you know it's almost like a debt, right? But uh, unlike that, it's not an annuity. It's a perpetuity. Um, it's a perp it's an annuity that goes on forever without any maturity so in case of um uh prefer stock uh, or even the common stock that doesn't grow but pays constant dividend we can use zero growth model and in zero growth model what's the uh, formula the formula is okay v means value of the stock right value of the stock um is dividend over R, okay? Of course, R is the discount rate, but uh, in stock is called required return, right? It's the required return. Required return is the discount rate, also sometimes called uh, cost of equity, cost of equity, right? You understand what cost of capital is? Uh, it's cost of equity. And then, uh, so where did this formula come from? You know, uh, uh, I'm going to get to that later. Um,
And Gordon growth model is uh, so called because it was it was devised by or it was formulated by uh, Professor Rob. Uh, there are two Gordons in you know economics. One is you know Robert Gordon, and I don't think this is Robert Gordon. Uh, uh, I forgot his first name, but uh, uh, Professor Gordon who formulated this model actually passed away uh, around 1980s. I can quickly. There is another uh, Gordon, Robert Gordon. Um, uh, and he, I think, is still alive or, but you know, that's not important. Uh, so one of the two famous growth models in economics is Gordon growth model and solo growth model. But solo growth model is not about uh, stock, but it's about the uh, uh, growth rate of the economy, economic growth. Um, but in Gordon growth model, uh, uh, the dividend, the assumption is that the dividend grows at a constant rate, constant growth rate. Okay, dividend grows at a constant growth rate. So um, the model is, oops, V0 is dividend at time T plus one or one, which means next period dividend over uh, R minus G. I was I almost wrote it as K, but you know you understand K, cost of capital, same thing. R minus G. So this G is the dividend growth rate, dividend growth rate. So this can be also rewritten as this can be rewritten as. Uh, So how do you know what dividend at time one is? Because dividend at time one is dividend in the next quarter. We uh, we don't know what dividend the next quarter is because it's the future. We don't we have so but no uh, we can forecast it how because we know uh, what did I say? This G is the growth rate of the dividend. So if we know the growth rate of the dividend. And then we have the dividend. Uh, we have the dividend at time zero, the, you know, uh, current dividend, right? Now, dividend at time zero is not actually this quarter's dividend, right? Because this quarter's dividend will be paid in the next quarter, right? So dividend at time zero is the last quarter's dividend. The last quarter's dividend is paid during this quarter. So uh, we know what dividend at time zero is, and then we compound it by the growth rate, right? We compound it by the growth rate, and then, you know, uh, that's what dividend at time one is, okay? So that's uh, the Gordon growth model. And the variable growth model is it's an extension. Actually, it's an application of Gordon growth model. So there, there is no particular, uh, if I were to uh, write it as a formula, right? Uh, there is no, present values of all, you know, uh, dividends during the fast growth period, and then uh, in variable growth model, we assume uh, different growth periods, fast growth period and uh, constant dividend, uh, constant growth period, and then the constant uh, constant dividend period comes after the fast growth period, so. So actually, you know, uh, uh, 
the constant uh, constant period, the constant period uh, growth period, will be uh, still in the future. So we will have a future stock price, uh, which is you know, uh, okay, which is the result of the. Uh, so I'm going to have to. Uh, Rewrite it. We'll have the uh, stock price at time n, which is the result of the Gordon growth model, right? Uh, which is the result of the. Uh, uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna rewrite it. Gordon model, right? And then we need to uh, bring it to present, right? We need to, uh, because it's the future stock price, we need to uh, find a present value of that, okay? And then free cash flow model is pretty much like, free cash flow model is pretty much like variable growth model. It's like, It's like uh, variable growth. It's so application of variable growth model, uh, but instead of dividend, instead of dividend, what goes into this is free cash flow. Okay, so uh, we're gonna uh, first start with the. Uh, uh, I'm going to first start with the uh, zero growth model or constant, which is not very difficult. So here's an example. But you know, before we do the example, because example is quite uh, easy, uh, as there isn't much to, uh, we'll need to, uh, uh, so here, you know, uh, I used S here for, but you know, uh, officially uh, V is the uh, uh, the reason I used S is because sometimes V is the uh, aggregate value of the stock in aggregate, aggregate, you know. So in other words, um, uh, total equity value. Right, something like total, you know, uh, common stock value. But you know, V or S, you know, uh, it's uh, the same thing. Okay. Now, our next question is then, how did? So this is like you know, uh, price at time zero. How did it come to uh, this form? How did it come to this form? Okay, the example, I mean, as long as you know what's, uh, uh, Chuck Swimmer estimates that the dividend of Denim Company, an established textile producer, is expected to remain constant, remain constant at $3 per share indefinitely. This is the Q, this is the Q that this is a zero growth model because indefinitely it's gonna be three. It won't grow or drop, right? So then this is you know, a zero growth model. Uh, therefore, uh, we just apply this formula, right? Uh, dividend divided by R, right? Comes to $20, right? But again, uh, uh, in this example, you think something like this, the uh, adjectives, established textile producer. The name of the company doesn't really matter, right? We just, we just, we can call it company X. Does it really matter? Huh? So um, it's just a frill, right? Some people don't get it, you know. Um, uh, you want the gist 
I mean, everything can can be uh, everything can boil down to the uh, the gist. But you know, if it is not qualified, in other words, if there is no frill, they don't get it. They don't understand. So something like you know, name of the company. You know, uh, it's like you know, uh, just like in the elementary school, they say you know, uh, uh, Jack and Jill went to the candy store. Jack had twenty dollars. Jill had. Uh, Eleven dollars. You know, uh, if candy is twenty-five cents, uh, how many? Right. Some something like this. Do we need to put a name like Jack and Jill? Does it matter? We can call it, you know, uh, Mr. X, Mr. Y. Right. right. Candy store doesn't matter. Can <laughs> That's elementary school, but there are people who still need that kind of verbiage. The gist is that X has, you know, X is 20, Y is 11. And then uh, the combined, you know, so the combined resources are 31. And then uh, the The object in question is, you know, the product in question is, you know, five dollars. Okay, then, you know, uh, uh, we want to know uh, how many. The variable is, you know, that the variable is the quantity. I mean, that given, you know, just given that way, we can we should be able to. You are grown ups, and as you know. Um, um, if you want to be treated as grown-up, your brain should also process, operate like a grown-up. But if you still ask for, oh, please, I need words, 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 then you're not a grown-up. Your brain is not a grown-up, at least, right? So uh, sometimes, you know, these things look so childish, you know, then, but then, uh, uh, this qualifier or adjective, you know, name, chop, swimmer, we need the name. What about Mr. X or Mr. A? Mr. A uh, or Ms. Ms. A estimates the dividend of company X. But is this necessary information or redundant information? An established textile producer, is that a, a redundant information? No, it's not a redundant information here. Why? Because established textile, established company, now everything jives in. Everything must jive in. Why? Unestablished means, you know, established company means a mature company. A mature company doesn't pay, a mature company doesn't pay uh, increasing dividend, growing dividend. Mature company pays dividend, definitely. Why? Because a uh, mature company is a cash cow. Mature company is a cash cow, they, uh, and uh, uh, mature company doesn't need to withhold or retain earnings. Why? Mature means they don't have room for growth. And if they don't have room for growth, uh, uh, there's no reason to retain the earnings, right? So they pay dividends. And I've been telling you, a fast growing company, a growth company, a growth company generally don't doesn't pay dividend. Why? Because they need they need capital for growth. They need to reinvest, they need to invest in their growth. So they retain all the earnings, don't pay out dividends. Right? Apple did that uh, since 19 uh, during uh, the middle of 1990s until like uh, middle of early 2000s for almost you know 10 plus years why they didn't pay dividends why because they needed all the uh, capital for uh, they needed to invest all the capital all the retain uh, they need to retain all the all the uh, earnings to invest in growth okay um 
So the uh, mature companies are non-growing, non-growth companies. So if they are non-growing, uh, their profit remains relatively constant. But mature companies have uh, the fact that they are uh, not growing, they are mature means, you know, uh, there is no more market share they can capture. They are mature. I mean, the only market share they can capture is from their competitors. But, you know, uh, mature company means they, they are bigger than, generally bigger than the competitors, right? And the mature companies so have little room for growth. So um, if they don't grow, the profits don't grow, right? Uh, if the profits don't grow, uh, their profits will be uh, at a constant level. And if their profits are on a constant level, then dividends will be constant, right? So that's what is meant by mature company. That is, that's what is meant by zero growth. So an established textile producer, this adjective is not a frill, right? It's not redundant. It's got its role. It jives in together with constant dividend indefinitely, okay? So um, these are cues you have to read from the, uh, the verbiage of the uh, problem. Another thing. So how did it come to this uh, formula? How did it? So uh, first of all, um, we have to, uh, I think, you know, it was also uh, So basically, um, basically, you know, um, we know uh, we are making a discounting dividend, uh, and the time subscript. We need time subscript if the dividends are all different. But if the dividends are not different, in other words, in case in this case, dividends are all um, uh, the same every time, right? All even, uh, then constant, that's why it is constant dividend, then it's, um, we don't need time subscript. So it, the whole thing will look like this. Price of the stock at time zero, right? Value of the stock at times zero, not price, value. Um, dividend one plus R, one plus R squared, you know what I'm, you know, it keeps on going, okay? It keeps on going until when? You know, stocks don't have any maturity, so it goes on forever. That means, you know, uh, infinity. So then you will uh, discount it uh, by one plus R raised to infinity. And then at that infinite future, what, um, you have stock price at the time, right? You'll have, uh, so this is, think about it. the value of the stock at the time, at that inf infinity, we need to discuss, but then think about it. Uh, one plus R raised to infinity will be, it, it's a number greater than one. One plus R is a number greater than one, of course. Of course it's greater. As long as R is positive, it's gonna be greater than one. Anything greater than one, if you raise it to infinity, what's it gonna be? Anything raised to anything greater than one raised to infinity, what's it gonna be? Anybody? I have how many people? And nobody can answer this question, huh? Can anyone answer this question? 
anything greater than one, any number greater than one raised to infinity, what's it going to be? Are you guys there? Rowan, are you there? Dealey, are you there? Alan's Rowan, you're there. Will it be infinity? Yes, yes, of course. It's going to be infinity. Rowan, you get 0 0.5. Of course. Any number greater than 1 raised to infinity will be infinity. Now, uh, of course, 1 raised to infinity, 1 raised to infinity, uh, it will just be 1. Number between any number between uh, 1 and 0 raised to infinity, it will be infinitely small number, not infinity, but infinitesimal number, because we all know <clears throat> uh, 0 0.1 raised uh, squared is already 0 0.01. If it is, you know, um, so the more it is, you know, uh, raised to power, uh, it will get smaller and smaller. But, you know, any number greater than one, it will be infinity. So this whole thing, uh, uh, this denominator becomes infinity. The denominator becomes infinity. But the dividend and the value of the stock at infinity, they are not, inf they are finite numbers. These are finite, finite numbers. So any finite number divided by infinity will become what? Any finite number divided by infinity, it will become what? Hmm? Anyone? D. Lee, are you there, D. Lee? Usman, are you there, Usman? I don't think you guys are there, so. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Who is that? D. Lee? Who's there? Oh, it's Usman. Usman, Usman. Okay, Usman. So uh, can you answer the question? Any finite number divided by infinity, what's it going to be? Hmm? Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to wait anymore because we're out of time. Look, any number, any finite, it's finite. Is it zero? Who said that? Who said that? Melody. Melody. Melody, uh, yeah, you, uh, your logic is right, uh, but you know, it's not exactly zero. Melody, you get 0 0.5, uh, but it will be close to zero, right? Think about it. Finite number, you divide it by infinite number, it will be close to zero. So these two terms will drop out. These two terms will drop out. Okay, so then you are left with, you know, uh, 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 the, you know, discounted terms, dividend over one plus R, uh, just up to where? Um, the one before this was, the one before this was dividend over one plus R raised to infinity minus one. Now, infinity minus one is still almost like infinity. But anyway, uh, we are left with, you know, uh, so what I'm saying is um, this term drops out. This term, uh, we don't need to bother with uh, the value of the stock at time n, uh, at infinite time. The value of the stock at infinite time, we don't need to bother with that. Now, but you know, it's almost like uh, infinity minus one is also almost like infinity. But we have dividend, discounted dividend terms going uh, almost forever. Uh, and how does that, how does that reduce to just this? Uh, we don't have time for that next time. So we're going to talk about that uh, next time. Okay. All righty. So that's it for today. Uh, have a great day, uh, everyone. Great afternoon. And I will uh, see you on Wednesday, okay? Uh, also online on Wednesday. All right. Thank you, Professor. Okay, you're welcome. I guess your toddler is saying bye. Yeah. <laughs> she All righty. All righty. Take care, everyone. All right. Uh, stop recording.